So, um, yeah, it looks good. Yay, we're live. Awesome. So, um, hello, everyone. This is the first Facebook live video that we're doing in the social media professors group. So, um, welcome. Again, I am the administrator for the group, Karen Freeberg. So, hi, everyone. I can't tell you guys how, how excited I am about this opportunity. This is an amazing experience. We're really, really fortunate to have one of my favorite people in the social media and crisis space come and speak to us um, today. So hi, hi, Avery. Oh my gosh, that's so great that you ordered Melissa's book. My dad says hi from California. So, Melissa. But I am honored to introduce and feature Melissa Agnes. Melissa and I first started um, corresponding through social media, and we had a chance to meet in person. Gosh, it's been a few years up in Montreal, and so she's fantastic, loves coffee, is amazing, and I'm really excited to have Melissa here to come to us um, live to talk about her recently published bestseller Amazon book, Crisis Ready. So, Melissa, thank you so much for coming and being part of our group. Thank you so much, Karen, for having me a part of this group. I'm so, so happy and excited and honored to be here um, chatting with you guys. So I guess I guess the best way to start would just, I'll give you kind of an overview of what this is and why it's why it was designed for students and how it applies and hopefully applies to you guys and maybe helps you um, in, with what you guys are achieving with your students. And then we can just kind of have a discussion if that works for everybody. Um, because I really want to hit the points that matter the most to you guys. It's not about me. Um, okay, so th I'm, I'm so excited about this book. This book has been, so it's called Crisis Ready, Building an Invincible Brand in an Uncertain World. And I've been, it has been a labor of love and passion and joy for the last year of my life. Um, and it was, so when I set out to write Crisis Ready, there are dozens of books on crisis out there already. And I knew that my book, I, I would not just write another book to kind of fit in with the rest of them. So it was really important for me that when I wrote this book, that the book be written in a way, first of all, that's completely applicable to today's day and age, just the world that we live in today um, and the experience that I have with organizations around the world and what that actually looks like in terms of issue and crisis management and becoming crisis ready. And then, but that it also be written in a way that is fun and um, just a, an experience that is enjoyable rather than an experience that is dreaded or not enjoyable or boring. Because like, crisis management is such a heavy topic. So it really needed to be fun. And then not just in the writing of it, but then in the print and students in mind with that where it's, it's this two color print. Um, so everything about it, it's got this, my flow chart that, you know, Rip is, um, let me show you, kind of, it comes out, this flow chart has been downloaded tens of thousands of times around the world by organizations and, and um, curriculum. So it works out. So all that just to say that the experience of the book was, was really, really important to me, not just the message and what it gave us in terms of value, but in terms of value, it was better than the experience. Um, so this book was, so let me kind of talk about what it means to be crisis ready. Um, it used to be that organizations could rely on a crisis management plan. Crisis management plan was a binder, typically a binder that's very generic, that sits on a shelf somewhere, and somehow it gives leadership solace knowing that in the event of a crisis, they could reach for that plan, they could follow it, and it would guide them through to crisis management success. But the reality today is that, first of all, organizations are faced with issues that can go viral and not necessarily rely on that plan because they don't escalate to crisis level. So it doesn't really even apply to all of the issues and the, the events and the risks that apply to business today. And when a crisis does strike, by the time you reach for that plan, you're already playing catch up because things escalate so quickly in this day and age and stakeholder demands and expectations are so high and they start at minute zero or minute, you know, 0 0.1, um, that we can't no longer, we can no longer rely on this crisis management plan. It's not about planning to in that sense anymore. It's about actually having a team that is crisis ready. So that means that the entire organization, the entire organization understands what risk looks like and how to identify it in real time. 
They understand once they've identified it, how to assess its potential impact on the brand. Is it an issue that's going viral or is it actually a crisis? And what do you do with that? And then once you are able to make that assessment to know precisely how to respond, not just in a way that manages the incident, but actually that manages the incident in a way where you come out of it with even more stakeholder trust and credibility and goodwill within the organization and towards the organization. That is being crisis ready. So not relying on a stagnant plan, but actually having a team that is equipped, enabled, and empowered to do all of these things in real time. And that is this book. That this book, and that's and when you do that, you have an invincible brand. Because no matter what comes at you, your entire team knows how to identify it, how to assess it, and how to respond to it in a way that increases stakeholder trust and goodwill in the brand. Um, and that is this book. This book brings you from no matter where an organization is on the crisis ready spectrum, straight through to building an invincible brand that is 100% crisis ready. And for students, students are our future. Students are the future of business. And I do so much work with students, with professors, fabulous professors like Karen. Um, and I do so many guest lectures and different things around the world every semester that it was clear to me, and not just that, but I, I get about five emails a week or, or LinkedIn messages a week from students saying, I'm so interested in crisis management. You know, where do I go? How do I learn more, et cetera, et cetera. So it was so clear to me that if students are the future of business and being crisis ready is essential for business today, that this book be written with students in mind, for students, um, for professors to easily integrate it into your curriculums. Um, the way that it was, it was designed as a book in terms of the flow is it takes you through my crisis ready model, which is exactly what I do. Just kind of give you an example or high level you know, viewpoint. Um, this is exactly the work that I do with my clients is as an advisor, crisis management advisor. Um, I take, I go through that model. This is my business model or, or my framework for working with clients. The book was, takes you through all of that entire framework and from a curriculum perspective, Point of view or from a course perspective that makes it a digestible chunk where you could say I'm going to focus on you know phase two and phase three in this course or I'm going to you know take two days and walk the, the the entire you know the class through all five phases and so it's really it's all that to say is put together in a way purposefully um, that hopefully hopefully it is valuable to you in your class and to your students especially and to really excite them is my hope because crisis the, this subject this is my this is my passion helping organizations become crisis ready is my passion so i kind of wanted that to be felt throughout and for it to generate excitement rather than dread as well right well and i have to say too like when it, you first um let me see your book well first of all i was like my initial reaction was Thank God, <laughs> honestly, because I was reading through this and I know we talked a little bit about this, Melissa, but I just was bookmarking everything because I do teach APR crisis class in the fall and just looking at the rate applicable strategies. A lot of times when you look at crisis communication books, you get the theory, which is absolutely appropriate in some circumstances. But what I felt was really missing were kind of the key strategies from a real world perspective that is sometimes missing in some books. And when I was reading your book, I felt it was not only easy to follow along, but your strategies and the way that you were framing things really made sense in terms of taking these complex concepts and really drilling it down for students to really understand. Because um, I think having that student, you know, in the having the students in mind when you're writing the book is, is so critical because well, I know a lot of students who had books and they're like, yeah, I just needed a, a thesaurus to figure out or a dictionary to figure out what is being written about in the book. But your book was very written. And what was interesting is by the time I was reading like chapter two, I'm like, okay, I can hear Melissa <laughs> basically reading this book to me, but I'm really excited. Um, this will be actually one of the books that I'm, I will be personally adopting in my PR and crisis um, class this fall. And I'm just really excited to, share what you you've learned and what you've been able to kind of create as part of your expertise and brand what's going on and so um i just wanted to jump in so sabrina says so funny i just got into melissa's book and you're going to be guest lecturing in her class yes, I am. Um, 
And then um, Paul is actually another former student. Hi, Paul. How's it going? Um, he teaches um, social media as well. And um, he also does a lot of work um, on the public health side in New Mexico. And so he looks forward to reviewing your book as well. So you are definitely getting a lot of reactions, um, Melissa. So that's really good. Wonderful. Thank you so much to all of you. Yeah. So I guess my question for you, like in terms of you know, you've talked about this book and so you wrote it and as both as we both know with writing books, it's definitely a lot of work and a lot of time. Um, did you have like a, like you mentioned your um, table and the things and your plans that you basically have implemented in real life that you use on a constant basis. Was there any chapter that you feel like, Oh my gosh, this, I can't wait for people to read this or students to see this. Oh my goodness. I have a, I've had a love affair with every chapter. I have to say every, because every chapter is something is an instrumental part or um, piece of becoming crisis ready. And I have just, a, I don't know, I suppose a, an attachment to, to different things in each chapter, but I will say that chapter seven, chapter seven. So the book is um, 63,500 words long. However, there is no fluff. So I did not set out to write a long book. The thing these days is the shorter, the better. So there is not everything in this book, in my opinion, needed to be in the book and there's nothing over, except there is an interlude uh, between chapters six and seven, which is kind of just totally random. Um, just because I felt like readers needed a break. <laughs> so I put in this 900 word funny story of me at risk. Um, so it applies to the theme of the book, but it, I just felt like people needed a, a break at that point. But chapter seven is about crisis communication and it's an 11,000 word chapter. And it took me a month to write just that one chapter, just because the way that I work and the way that my brain sees all of these, you know, all of this is not linear. And yet you have something like crisis communication, which is so essential to get right in order to successfully manage a crisis or an issue. Um, and how did, how could I take everything that is involved with that, that my brain doesn't see in a linear fashion and put it in a linear fashion in a comprehensible way that's actually interesting and fun and engaging and where you can actually absolutely absorb everything that I need you to absorb or, or set out to have you absorb in that chapter. So I suppose I had a, a love-hate affair with that chapter because it was one of the most important chapters and yet, and and it was the most challenging chapter to write. So, yeah. Now, and we have chapters like that, too, that I, I know even in my book that I've written. There's a, there's one chapter that I know a few close friends and family members know that I definitely was talking about this chapter a little uh -huh. bit more than others. But I think sometimes the chapters that are the most difficult are the ones, the ones that you spend the most time on to make sure that they're right. And I love the fact that you do have a human element in your book. And the thing is, everyone, you know, for professors, if you have not had... Melissa, do a guest talk in your class or been a guest speaker. She's fantastic. And I, I can definitely brag a little bit. She has captured like not only interest and passion amongst my students. And I've had several that have basically said, I want to go into crisis communications because of Melissa's talk. And you made that impact. Wow. And I, I feel that it's, it's really cool. I know um, Patrick Murrow from Florida State University, you literally have a fan club out there. Um, you have a lot of Melissa Agnes fans out in Florida State. But it, it, it's just you're able to resonate with the students and make that impact. And I think in this day and age for social media, you've got to have a human side to what we do. And um, not everyone is going to be like, okay, anyone can write you know, a, a book. But if you're able to showcase your expertise, but then also say, hey, okay, here's my experience. Here's what I've learned, why I'm coming and doing this, et cetera. Like, I, I feel that it really makes an impact. And you did this very well in your book, Melissa. It really is, a, I mean, again, I, I, as I mentioned, when I was reading your book, I'm like, I'm hearing Melissa basically reading me this book all about crisis and issues and risk management. So it's a lot of fun. Biggest compliment, Karen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And so, um, so we talked a little bit about the book chapters. And so um, could you talk a little bit about which type of classes you would see this book being really applicable? Because I, I know, like, I'm going to be teaching a PR and crisis specific one, but there may be other programs. Um, we have a wide range of professionals and professors here in the group that teach social media classes, but they also do marketing, business. What other classes would this be a good book for? So 
you're hitting them all. Um, business, absolutely. Um, you know, anything that's communication, PR, marketing, anything that's frontline basis. I mean, even if it were sales, because crisis management is about people. Um, and it's about relationships. So every sing- to be crisis ready, it really is full spectrum. Every single part of the organization, every single member of staff and of each team needs to be crisis ready. So, but where it really, really applies is the ones that you've if you've named: marketing, PR, communications, um, risk management, crisis management, business continuity, um, business, business strategy, leadership. Um, and I have a list too on my blog that I did, you know, how this fits for, for curriculums and for different courses. Um, and I did put a list and I, I think that I didn't put social media as a dummy. So I'll go back and, mod- and modify that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, you really, you are touching a really good point about like where social media falls into the, I mean, well, not only social media, but crisis communication falls into the mix. And I've, Excuse me, I've had a couple of um, conversations actually with MBA um, students um, here at U of L, and I'm like, yes, you need to be aware on the crisis communication side. Yes. They're like, well, that's communication. I'm like, no, that, it, I mean, crises impact business. And so it, it is important to kind of look at crisis communication as an, an area that it has to be covered in all aspects. And I think that was one of the things that I saw in your book is that I could see this in any different type of business communication, um, even sports specific um, classes or in interest related um, classes and special topics. So I definitely see this as being very applicable. Um, so we talked a little bit about the chapters, the features. Um, what are some ways if people wanted to find out more about the book, they can go to your website. Yes. Um, but where else could they find out a little bit more about the website? Um, um, so there's a ton of information on my website. It's on Amazon. The book is available on Amazon. Um, but the most information you're going to get is on my website. And then I link to even further information. Um, so like if you're, for example, if you're interested in learning more about the crisis ready model, which is my process, my framework, that triangle, I have a blog post that is dives into each one of those phases and what that looks like and how, you know, and then it, of course it ties back to the book and the book walks you through. So there's so, there's a wealth of information on my, uh, on my website. Okay. And that's melissaagnes.com. com. Melissa right. Yes, it is. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, definitely everyone make sure that you not only check out Melissa's website, melissaagnes.com, but also follow Melissa on Twitter, Instagram. She's amazing. And also here too, you're part of our great community here in the social media professors group. So you have enough and many different touch points to reach out to Melissa. So she is Absolutely. fantastic. And I'm, happy I'm all to- about team. Yeah. And seriously, and to Kara's point earlier, if anybody is interested in having me come and speak to your students virtually, happy to do that. Just reach out and talk to me about it. We'll, we'll put it in the calendar. We'll get your, your students excited about being crisis ready and what it means and, and all of that. So if that was interesting to you, then that's my pleasure to, to talk to you about. That would be fantastic. Absolutely. Well, I definitely will need to talk to you too about the fall semester to make sure that we get you on your schedule here at, at Louisville to definitely talk. Absolutely. But um, no, no, I, I do think that there's just so much room. Like, I mean, again, I have to commend you, Melissa, for putting so much information in a book, you know, because I mean, even for me, like, I'm just literally bookmarking stuff. And I, I feel like too, one of the cha- like one of the things maybe you could talk a little bit about um, as we wrap up is, how could professors, because one of the big things that I've noticed among professors is how do you apply what you've learned in the book into like exercises and assignments? And I wanted to get a sense from you, um, what would be some initial ideas you could share with professors on, okay, how do we basically test the student's understanding of what it means to be crisis ready? Absolutely. And actually, okay, so I'm a games person, not video games. I don't do those, but (laughs) with actual humans, I love that. So there's tons of those in the book. There's, I didn't call them quizzes because I, I hear that people who aren't geeks like me don't like quizzes and tests. Um, so we call them different, like different things, but they are there. There's a lot of games in the book. There's a lot of, um, reflective points so it's you know I'll I'll paint a scenario after I've gone through a learning and I'll paint a scenario and I'll say before we continue put some thoughts and here's some lines um what do you think do you think it's an issue do you think it's a crisis because we just talked about that 
or what would be the impact or whatever it is. So the book was actually designed because that to me is the best way to learn um, personally, never mind for students and other professionals. And, and I think it makes it a little bit more fun. And then I also did things where it's like, I asked that question and then I actually make you have to turn the page to continue reading. So it was designed to kind of give you a breather and to allow you to reflect and to have to make that motion of turning it over so that you just don't read that and continue reading rather than reflecting. So it is integrated in the book. And then on top of that, I would absolutely love actually. So if there's professors out there that if you guys are thinking about potentially, you know, having this as part of your course, um, I would love to talk to you about how we could do something together in, and that would be applicable to all of you, or we could have different versions depending on your courses where if you could, I could actually help you because I know exactly what needs to be tested, right? Like in, in terms of practicality and working with clients and working with organizations, like I can pinpoint those things. So I'd be happy to work with you on that and then have it available as a resource on my website for other professors to, to benefit from as well. So that, that would totally, that to me is like another game. So that would totally excite me. Um, and, and I'd be happy to do that. So I don't know if that's helpful, but it's there. It's an open invitation. Well, I think that you've probably done like a first for many authors to be able to willingly help professors help them out if they're willing to adopt the book. Well, um, I, but it really is important to me. It really, like this book, one of my main objectives with this book, I have a couple of objectives, kind of big ones, but one of my main ones is that I want this book to be required reading in a minimum of a thousand courses across North America. That's a huge objective to have, yeah. and as Sabrina actually was the one to point, or no, it was Carolyn May Kim um, mm -hmm. who pointed out to me, she's like, how are you going to quantify that? I was like, I probably can't, because I just learned today that uh, there's a professor in Greece that has been using my material for the last five years, and the only reason I knew was because two of her students recently reached out, and then I went to her, and I said, hey, thanks for doing that, and she said, yeah, I've been doing it for five years, and, and I already bought your book, and I'm already like thinking of integrating it in. So there's no way to completely quantify it, but it is an objective of mine. Mm -hmm. So if I could quantify 1,000 and know that there's a few other ones out there um, that I'm not kind of tallying, it would just mean, it would mean that more businesses, being crisis ready is about putting people first. People above process and bottom line always. It's one of the crisis ready rules. And that to me makes the world a better place. So helping students understand that concept and take that with them as a value add, as an asset, as a, you know, something that stands them out of the crowd to go into the workplace, that is a part of my mission. So, and it's, it's really, really important to me um, as an objective for the book and, and the greater meaning of the book in, in, in the world. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to sound too mega, but it's, it's my passion. So I just rambled a little bit. <laughs> no, no, it's great. And it's really exciting because one of the things, too, that I really love about the community that we have in the social media professors group is how not only are we coming together for common interest and community, but we are such a global group. I mean, I have professors, like we have professors here from Europe, from Asia to Australia to, you know, South America. It's just so cool to see such, you know, a global community. And I think... Yeah, I mean, I see this as a potential, like, game changer to adopt, in, not just in Northern America, but also around the world, and I, I, I love the fact that, you know, that's really cool to hear that story, you know, about, about the professor from Greece who's been using your to provide value and an impact that, that basically translate this into a long-standing relationship, which is really cool, but um, one thing I wanted to basically also, like, last thing that I wanted to address with you too, Melissa, is that we have a lot of professors in this group, but we also have some industry professionals, um, some that are um, part of various groups that provide certifications. And so can you, like, how could this book also be a good resource to add on to perhaps trainings and professional certifications? Oh, see, that too is a wonderful question and just like an exciting thing um, within the same way. So really the crisis ready model is precisely that it it allows you to break it down into chunks getting to a pivotal point and then knowing that being crisis ready is evolutionary and it's constant it's a continual um, so you don't just get to be crisis ready but then you integrate it into a culture of this crisis readiness where you're continuously going through the motions of, of these five phases um, but it is it would fit 
perfectly into that. Um, and again, was designed with that in, in mind. And I was actually, I've been toying with the idea of me helping uh, professionals become crisis ready certified. I'm still kind of toying with that idea of what that might look like, but I know 100% that the crisis ready model, it's a contextual model and it was designed for that and then brought into the book and, and really just a, um, a summation of the work, the process that I take with clients to help them build invincible brands. So. Yeah, because I definitely see, like, I mean, I've done a lot of work with various certifications, so have um, some of the, you know, professionals and great people in our group, they've either t been part of um, formulating these um, certifications, or they are working for organizations that have created some of these certifications, and so I think that this would be a definitely a great book to add on, um, because of course, what we're seeing in crisis communications is when you think you've seen it all, just wait a few minutes, and then there'll be another crisis that emerges and we need to be crisis ready all of us and so um yeah but um i just really want to take the time to thank you melissa um it seems to me that we've gotten a lot of reactions a lot of you know interesting posts but i think that there's going to be a few people that may um have questions after seeing the replay of our talk today um but is what are the best ways to get in contact with you if they have additional questions not just from um, being part of this group. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Melissa at melissaagnes.com. You can email me directly. You could also, I'm like Karen mentioned, I'm on all of the social media channels, so you can, you know, ping me there. Um, and melissaagnes.com has all of that, all of those links and, and email and forms and anything that you may need. I'm very accessible. <laughs> yes. <So. laughs> There's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's what's great is that you're very approachable. You're you're easy to access to, and also I can't endorse Melissa enough for being an amazing guest speaker. She's fantastic. She knows what she's doing. So if you are looking at having a crisis communication expert speak to your class, she's the one definitely to um, invite and reach out to. So it's been um, a pleasure, Melissa having you on our very first, very excited, um, live video session for our group. So this is the first, like you were the first to do this. And so I I'm really so, honored. And I was so looking forward to this since we scheduled it, Karen. So thank you to all of you and to you, Karen, for inviting me on. And again, if anybody has any questions or wants to anything at all, just Melissa at melissaagnes.com and let's, let's chat about it. Yeah, let's definitely continue the chat and make sure to check out uh, Melissa Agnes's new book. Um, you can find it, of course, on her website, but as Melissa has with um, already in her hands, the printed copy, <laughs> fabulous, and a very pretty green. It's really Thank you. It's, Thank you. it's, it's my green. Right, green. right. right. And so everyone has everyone has great colors and so yeah as you guys can see with the num um, with the names on the bottom purple is mine so yeah so green is a very beautiful color so but i can't thank melissa enough for taking the time to share with all of us her book and i think definitely take advantage of it go on amazon download it um order it definitely check it out it, it, it's a really much needed book in the industry if you cover PR, marketing, business, social media, if you are covering a section, which all of us are probably doing it already in our classes, an aspect of crisis communication, this is a must have. So again, Melissa, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us your book. And I want to thank also those of you who've been watching us live. And for those of you who are watching the replay, we really appreciate that and making this community what it is, a really viable and wonderful um, place to share ideas, share book news, and really discuss what we can do to help each other out. So thanks again. And you guys all have a wonderful day. So thank bye. you. Thank you You're welcome. Bye.